All right, we're going to try and make this as fair as we can. Each speaker has five minutes to speak. The timekeeper is right here. He has a large clock, so you'll be able to see the countdown. Then we've got the guy with the shepherd's hook behind No, never mind. When your time is up, we would ask you to step down and let the next one up. Then we will be taking a break, and then we will be doing questions. So we're going to go ahead and start as Mr. Leach here, Arthur Leach. Yes, sir. Our first speaker tonight, Mr. Leach. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight. There's a lot more people here than I thought there was going to be, so bear with me. Uh, a little bit nervous. Um, my name is Arthur Leach, I'm a candidate for PBA. Um, a little bit about myself. I grew up here in Ohio County, uh, born and raised. Graduated from right here in Ohio County High School, and after that I went to WKU where I received my bachelor's degree. I uh, moved back home and I married the love of my life, my high school sweetheart, Kayla. Uh, we now have two boys, Flint and Boone. They're the absolute joy of my life. Um, I've been working at the PBA office for a little over a year now. Uh, it's not something that I really intended on doing. Um, I was told that nobody plans on assessing taxes, and that's actually true. So, um, but since I've been working there, I've learned to love the job. Um, I, I love the people. I love the public. I love dealing with the public. And uh, whenever I become PBA, something that you can expect is I will keep assessments fair. Uh, they may not be what everybody wants them to be, but they will be fair. Uh, it's something I will strive to do. Uh, you will be treated with respect in the office, um, not just from me, but from anybody. Um, like I said, we may not agree on what, what what you're there to talk to me about, but you will be treated with respect. I can assure you that. And something else is I want to be available. Uh, if there is someone that has an issue, I want you to be able to come and talk to me personally. Uh, we'll deal with it one way or another. And um, I look forward to serving the county. Hope you all have a great evening. If you have any questions, let me know. Let's go ahead. Uh, go ahead one more time. If you have questions, please get an index card. Uh, I think we've got a couple people with them. You can go up to the table and get one, fill it out. Those will be the questions that we will be asking the candidates later on. So please. And uh, I'm. I apologize, I'm learning people and names. I forgot Miss Jolene, she is our secretary. So thank you, Jolene. <laughs> Next speaker will be John Alcott. Good evening. My name is Sean Alcott and I'm a candidate for the Kentucky Supreme Court. The courtroom is the battleground for truth and justice these days. And I've spent the last 28 years seeking truth and justice in the courtroom. I've represented individuals and small businesses, nurses, physicians, and hospitals, city and county governments, and even spent time as a prosecutor. I have practiced at all areas or all levels of the Kentucky Supreme of Kentucky Court System. I've been in district court, juvenile court, circuit court, the Court of Appeals, and before the Kentucky Supreme Court. Every day and every year of my legal career has prepared me to serve on the Kentucky Supreme Court. Now, while I'm proud of what I've accomplished in my 28-year legal career, I'm more proud of my family. My husband Mark and I are the proud parents of three children. Our oldest daughter is a high school senior. Our son is a sophomore in high school and our youngest is finishing up junior high. And if you're paying attention, that's correct. You've counted right. That's three teenagers in our household. I've worked hard all my life. My first job was when I was 12 years old and I worked for my dad. I cleaned the bathroom and I mopped the floors in his small business. 
My parents instilled in me the value of hard work and taking pride in whatever you're doing. I'm working hard to try to instill the same conservative values in my children. And I will work hard for the citizens of this Commonwealth. I humbly ask you for your vote so that I can serve this Commonwealth on our Supreme Court. Please visit SeanAlcott.com for more information. I also have a Facebook uh, account for the campaign, so please check that out. Like it and share it as much as you can, because I need your help. I would love to work with you in my campaign to be the next court, Supreme Court Justice for the Second District. Thank you for your time. Good night and God bless. I wanted to tell you before we get started, uh, we talked about how we would have this, who we would invite, and we did not want to discriminate against anybody. So yes, we are the Ohio County Republican Party. Uh, we do have candidates here from other parties, and we also have positions that are supposed to have no political affiliation. So you're going to hear from all different kinds of people. We feel it's important that you know your candidates who they are and what they're doing. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll kind of get into the meat and potatoes of things. Anthony, Omni, Omni. I know him as Tony. I work with him in the courthouse. Come on up, Abney. Come on up. with a guy for a year and he don't even know my last name. That's, like that's my privilege. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Good evening. I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight to meet the candidates. I'd like to thank the Republican Party for hosting this Meet the Candidates event. Give a chance for all the candidates to uh, meet the candidates and hear a little bit about what we've got to say. Well, tonight, before I uh, get started, uh, I just want to let you know, my name is uh, Anthony Bionis Abney. Most people know me as Tony. I'm not on the ballot as Tony, I'm on the ballot as Anthony. I've been asked two questions so far in my campaign. The first one is, does anybody know you as Anthony Abney? And my answer to that is, I don't know, <laughs> but, I, but I sure hope so. Uh, and I plan on trying to meet as many people in the 5th District as possible between now and the May primary so you can get a chance to know me. The second question that I've been asked so far in my campaign is, have you lost your mind running for political office? And my answer to that is, no, I fully know what I'm doing, and I assure you that I still have all my faculties. As I said, uh, my name is Anthony Leonis Abney. Most people know me as Tony. I'm the son of the late Leonis Miller Abney and Anna Laura Young Abney. My wife, Sheila and I, have raised three children in this community, which I'm proud to say is my home. Amen. We're Mimi and Paul, eight grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, boys, and one great-grandson that's due in July. So I'm vested in this community. I'm a graduate of Ohio County High School, where I was a four-year member of the Ohio County basketball team and a proud member of the 68-69 basketball team that was runners-up in the state tournament. If anybody's here is old enough to remember that. <laughs> also a three-year member of the Ohio County football team, which I'm very proud of. 
in uh, most of my adult life, I have uh, volunteered to work with the youth through t-ball, softball, baseball, and football. I've coached basketball, boys basketball at Beaverdown Elementary School. I've taught, coached girls basketball at Beaverdown Elementary and Whalen Elementary. I uh, retired from Century Aluminum, where I uh, worked there for 44 years. I worked one year for the Ohio County Sheriff's Office as a court bailiff, where uh, I received criminal justice training from the Kentucky State Police Post in Richmond, Kentucky. I've worked the last two years for the Ohio County Detention Center, and I am currently still working at the Ohio County Detention Center. You know, elections are kind of reflections. Either how you have served in your political office or your life. I've never run for political office, so I don't have a record on that. But my family is my reflection and they're here tonight to support me. And I appreciate you all for being here. Uh, the duties of constable. A lot of people have their own opinions about this. My opinion is I have a good working relationship through the detention center working with law enforcement. And if I'm elected, Constable in the 5th District, I assure you that I will continue to work with law enforcement and assist them where necessary. I will serve warrants, summons, and any other paper deemed so by the court. In closing, I'd just like to say that if I am elected by the voters of the 5th District, my promise to you is that you'll get somebody that will represent you in a fair manner, somebody that will be dedicated to serving you in the 5th District, and also serving the people of our county. Thank you and good night. When uh, we didn't discuss, are we charging people that run over? <laughs> Tony, you were about 30 seconds too long, buddy. All right, uh, next we'll have Ronnie Schroeder, Constable, 1st District. I'm not as long-winded as Tony. Thank you. We the people. I've been telling everybody at work all week, I'm just gonna get up here and recite the preamble to y'all. But I really can't. My name is Ronnie Schroeder. I'm running for constable in District 1. I've lived in Hartford and a lifelong resident of Ohio County. I've raised two children here, <clears throat> Michelle who's 30, and I have a son, Chaylin, who's forever 24. I have two granddaughters, Addison's eight, Marley's three, and a grandson, Jensen, he's seven months old. I attend church at Legacy in Owensboro. I work at the detention center where I have for 16 or 17 years, and I've also worked five or six years in other aspects of the court system. I coach youth baseball and softball, spending time with the grandkids is the greatest. I'm running for constable, hopefully to be an asset to the community in many different areas, serving papers, helping the police departments with pat downs so they don't have females on duty. I also have a passion for recovery, and we see so many inmates who get out of jail and are released to go to rehabs and don't have a safe ride or a sober ride to get there. I know the sheriff's office and the police departments don't have the time to do that, so I'd like to make myself available to see that they get where they need to be safely. Uh, I guess that's about it. I thank you all for coming out. I thank you for your support.
All right, now we'll go ahead and we'll start the magistrate's position. Bo Bennett. Bo Bennett, you're next up. Hi everybody, I'm Bo Bennett and uh, I'm running for third district magistrate. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've uh, grown up and lived in Ohio County for 27 years. Uh, whenever I got out of college in 2017, I started in the ag industry in Ohio County, and uh, I'm still moving in the same industry today. Um, I actually recently engaged to uh, be married in August of this year, so it's a pretty exciting time in my life. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't know how to be a good magistrate yet. Uh, I don't have, I don't really have experience with that, but what I do know is what I would want and want, and that'd be somebody who's relatable and somebody who is uh, reachable, somebody who whenever you're not able to reach them, get back with you in a timely manner. Uh, someone who would treat my ideas and concerns like it was their own. And like I said, I don't know how to be a magistrate yet, but I do know uh, I can be that guy. I can be that guy that is concerned with all your issues and concerns. And uh, I appreciate y'all having me up here tonight. I'd love to meet each and every one of you throughout the campaign. Thanks. Thank you. Next for Magistrate at 4th District is Kenneth Calloway. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight and I also appreciate the hard work that went into this event. You can tell a lot of work has gone into it, a lot of time and a lot of volunteer hours and I appreciate that. So, but My name is Kenneth Calloway. I'm running for 4th for District Magistrate. Uh, I grew up in, in McGann, uh, the, the big city of McGann, and uh, went to the school there at, at Sugar Grove Christian Academy and graduated from there. Uh, after after going there for about 11 years and uh from there my my goal was to get married and have kids at which i succeeded i, I ended up married my wife of 25 years is sitting in the back melanie i have four children um and one grand grandchild so that's that's what's changed since the last time i ran for this office i, I am a grandfather now and proud of that uh, macy born on christmas day 2020 and uh, I, my other three children are still at home uh, all of them have, are in college or have just recently graduated from college. And then from there, um, I, I decided to join the military. I spent 17 years in the Army Reserves with most of my time spent as a drill instructor um, in the Army Reserves and uh, spent some time working at Kimball, about 10 years at Kimball with Mr. Beatty. I think he, he, he oversaw the plant there for a little while while I was there. And then from there, moved on to Century Aluminum. And uh, I've worked at Century Aluminum for the last 17 years now, started as a process tech out in the pot line area uh, as, a, as a production worker and uh, I'm currently serving as the Vice President of Human Resources for the company, overseeing our global operations, our two facilities in Kentucky, one in South Carolina, one in Iceland, and one in the Netherlands. And uh, my passion is workforce development and that, that's what it, my focus is, will be on if elected into this position. Uh, we, we need to increase and improve the economic condition of the, of the county that we live in and without industry moving in and without preparing our workforce as, as we should, it's going to be difficult to, to, to come out of that. And I think we can see that looking across our, our county now. We're, we're in a position to where we have numerous jobs open at, at various companies, even at our company that, that we work at today. Um, we have numerous jobs open, but we need employees to fill those. And we want employers to come into this county. We have the or 165 corridor here within the county as well. We're set up for that development. We have, we have property set up for that development. And I wanna bring my passion of workforce development to be able to, to, be able to improve the economic condition. Uh, both from a, from a college standpoint and realizing the, the importance of college. I didn't go to college until I turned 32. 
and was able to finish college sitting at the same table with my kids while they were doing their homework on a, on a nightly basis and, and show them the importance of that education. But also from a trades perspective, which is an area that we've neglected as a country as a whole over the course of the last several decades, and, and we're seeing that battle now. Within our company that, that I work for, we have about 50 open positions in the trade area. Uh, average pay is about $30 an hour, which, which is a, a very good uh, rate of pay for, for anyone with a two-year degree coming out with a two-year technical degree. And so I want to help improve that within the county here, provide opportunities, but provide opportunities within Ohio County so that our, our children and our grandkids don't have to leave the county to be able to, to make a good living for their, for their families and to improve their condition and improve their family's condition. So uh, with that being said, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Phillips and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next will be Magistrate 5th District, Larry Morphew. Nice crowd. Yes. Shows that the people of Ohio County cares about who's in office. Yes. yes. To the voters of the 5th District, I'm Larry Morphew. I'm running for re election for 4th District Magistrate. Yes. I've lived in Ohio County my entire life. I am a member of the Horse Branch Church of God, a graduate of Ohio County High, a retired coal miner and masonry worker. I'm so blessed to have a loving and supporting family. My wife, Rita Wagner Morphew, son Brandon, daughter-in-law Bridget Hines Morphew, and the joy and pride of my life are my three grandchildren, Brady, Brittany, and Bryce Morphew. It's been a privilege serving the people of the 5th District. I am very proud of the progress made in our communities during the seven plus years. As election time rolls around again, I'd like to share some of the things accomplished in the 5th District. Blacktop, 2,822,369 dollars in the 5th District. Use discretionary money from Cole Severance to support Cromwell, Horse Branch, and Rosine Car Departments. These departments are in much better financial condition under my term than previous. I also supported Rosine, Horse Branch, and Cromwell Community Parks with funds as needed in the effort to keep these parks safe and open. In addition, here's a list of projects I supported financially. Rosine Barn, Bill Monroe, Cromwell Boat Ramp, Veterans and Honor Guard, 4-H, Chamberlain, Relay for Life, Boy Scouts, Junior Pro Basketball, Ohio County Fair, Habitat for Humanity, Courthouse Players, Golf Course, and Emergency Management. I made the motion and it passed, giving the Ohio County Vocational School $25,000. Finally, the 5th District has more, many more fire hydrants than when I took office. This makes fire use affordable as well as the community safer. I'm retired and can vote devote all my time to magistrate. I have an answering machine as do not miss any calls. All calls are returned. I attend, I attend all training sessions available through CACO. I have many contacts at CACO as well as Kentucky Legal Cities for any legal issue that might arise. I'm the most qualified candidate for the 5th District Magistrate. I served 12 years as a Beaver Dam City Commissioner and the past seven plus years as the Magistrate of the 5th District. I'm the only candidate with this kind of experience. The experience will be crucial in the next four years as our county will be facing budget cuts as well as losing coal severance money, as well as the many other issues our nation is facing. Any questions? or concerns, call me at 270-274-9068. And if I'm not home, I have an answering machine. And this is something that uh, I've 
drawed it up and got the court to sign it, and I sent it to uh, uh, Rand Paul, Mitch McConnell, President of the Kentucky Senate, and uh, Speaker of the House, and Comer, to whom it may concern. I do not support federal COVID-19 vaccine mandates. I believe that vaccines make sense, but I also believe that the American people should have the right to decide for themselves whether to be vaccinated or not. The COVID-19 vaccine mandate affects 80 million Americans. Mandating vaccines on private businesses will further harm their ability to harm workers as they look to bring employees back to the workplace. People should consult with their physicians and make their own informed decisions. Destroying people's livelihoods is not the answer. I respect people to make the choice that's best for them. Therefore, I cannot support President Biden's mandate. We resist any forced vaccinations and forced mandates. And I've been a master for seven plus years. And we have a good working relationship. We've got a good court. We've got a good judge and four more magistrates. It's easy to work with. And on these uh, projects that I supported, you can check with Ann Melton because she is a penny pincher and she keeps the count of everything. She's a good treasurer. <laughs> And I would ask you for your support, vote support in the primary. Thank you. Magistrate for the 5th District, we've got four people that's running right now. Uh, Tim Johnson will be the next one. Tim? Is Tim here? Stuck in the corner. <laughs> Hi, hello everyone. Hope everyone's having a, a good evening here. I'd like to thank the Republican Party of Ohio County for hosting this event. Uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank God for giving me the ability to be here tonight, to have the ability to be able to run for public office, have the will to want to serve the public. I want everyone to know that if elected, every decision that I make will be preyed upon first before that decision is made. I'm married to Amanda Johnson who works at Horse Branch Elementary. I have three children, uh, a son in high school, a son and a daughter both in elementary school at Horse Branch. I graduated here at Ohio County High School, went on to Received a two year degree in CAD at Bowling Green Technical College. I currently work at Dysel here in the county. I've been there for 15 years as a manufacturing supervisor. So, a lot of people want to know why do you want to run for magistrate? Well, I want to see the county improve. I want the things to be better for my children. You know, I want things to progress. I want things to be better. I enjoy investigating things and finding out solutions and problem solving. That's what a lot of this job is, is making data-driven decisions and solving problems. Some of my goals, if I get elected that I want to achieve, number one, for our volunteer fire departments, we need to make sure those folks have all the necessary funds for training and equipment. If you don't live in a rural area, you don't understand that these folks are our first line of defense when something happens, if you live out in a rural area. They need our support, they need proper training, proper equipment. Also with our county police department, they need to make sure they have proper training, proper equipment, I'd like to get more Patrols in the rural areas. We're getting more roads blacktop, which means there's more people speeding in these small communities. Children play. Um, you have small yards. Children are close to the road. I'd like to get more patrols in those areas and try to crack down on 
some of the speeding there. Talking about roads, I don't want to do any more chip and seal. If I get elected, I want to do black cop only. You won't be able to do as many miles every year, but it'll last much longer and it'll, in the long run, it'll be more bang for your buck to, to not do chip and seal and do black cop only. We have to stop erosion around the roads. Uh, I, we've been doing some spraying, killing the grass, which really helps erosion out. I think we should go back to mowing the roads instead of spraying the weed killer. Uh, because if your road edges erode away, then your blacktop falls apart. Also, we got to look at economic development in this county. We have prime real estate out around the Daiso area with the interchange of I-165 and the WK Parkway. It's prime real estate for new business. There are many, many businesses opening up in surrounding cities. They need suppliers to those businesses and we have a very good spot here in Ohio County to try to get those businesses to come here. We have to attract them. Uh, we have to expand tourism in the county, especially in the 5th District, to get more tourism dollars. We have to solve our internet problem in the county. Everyone in the county should have access to internet. We've got to figure that out. We have to get some people together and make that happen. So people may say these are lofty goals and they can't be done. The word can't is not in my vocabulary. Anything can be done and accomplished. With hard work, determination, data-driven decisions, and teamwork. I would appreciate everyone's vote come May. I will do the best job I can for the 5th District. I will always have my phone with me and I will return every phone call and I will do the best job that I can for everyone. Thank you. Our next candidate will be Magistrate 5th District, Keith Nelson. Keith Nelson. Of course, I'm running for the 5th District. Hold your microphone closer, please. Uh, I'm a widower. My wife, Linda Provis Nelson, we, she was from Horse Branch. Um, she had passed away. It'll be nine years next month. Um, to ALS, if anybody remember back at the ALS challenge uh, from the ice and whatnot, uh, it was about then when she had passed away. But anyway, uh, I didn't write nothing down. I'd rather it come from my heart. I like to help people if I can. Uh, I'm kind of backward when I get around a crowd this size. Uh, I retired out of the Department of Transportation, I think is in 2007. Uh, I have a road master degree through the road department or the uh, state highway department. Uh, through UK. After I retired, I went to work construction for ENR contracting, running an excavator, and I kind of enjoy equipment. And uh, then I came on board and helped David for a while for probably close to five years on some roads. And uh, roads is something that's in my back. I kind of know them. Uh, or uh, you can blacktop a road, but if you don't ditch and check your cross drains, replace your cross drains, you're not going to have a road. You got to go through and, and chip and seal. It's designed when the blacktop road goes bad and starts breaking up, cracking up, that you can go over and seal it and chip it and it'll last probably five more years, maybe seven if you're lucky. Uh, but it, it has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. Uh, it'll knock dust down if you got a gravel road, you can uh, double coat it and it'll 
Hill Doctor does them, it'll last for a while. And one thing that I liked about that, it would show you your weak points in your road. If you seal that road, the gravel road, there's going to be places where water's underneath the road trying to come up and it will break that chip and seal, but you'll know your weak parts before you ever go into blacktop. I have a son, a daughter, uh, two grandsons, and a granddaughter. I graduated here at the high school, uh, worked with most of the people that's in office now, and worked around them and enjoyed all of them. But I appreciate any help, but one thing I was kind of curious about wonder how many people here is from the 5th district that's not a magistrate or, or running for magistrate. This is something that we need to work on in our people to draw them out. If they want to do something about things that's not right that they don't like in their community, they need to speak up. They need to come out and be with people. If people don't care, things will really go bad. That's about all I got to say. Thank you all. Thank you. Next, we'll have uh, Dwayne Johnson, Magistrate, 5th District. Y'all expecting the rock? <laughs> Two seven zero, two seven zero seven seven five three two three five. That's my phone number. Somebody told me the other day if you go around for magic, they gotta know your phone number. Is that right, Jason? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. My name is Dwayne Johnson. I'm a candidate for the Bachelor of the Fifth District, and my sign says I want to be the voice of the Fifth District. So you have my phone number, and you can tell me. Uh, what your ideals are and I humbly ask for your vote and support in this election. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Ohio County. Ohio County is the best county in Kentucky and I'm proud of all the work that everybody does here, all the leaders in Ohio County. But we, we always have room for improvement though, don't we? I've been married to uh, Miss Greta for almost 37 years. I have a, a son, Travis. His, his wife's Kelsey. I have a daughter, Kelly Jones. Her husband, Andrew, works here in this building. And of course, Kelly works at Horse Branch with me. Uh, Brent Johnson out in Washington and Megan's his wife. So I have three children and four grandkids. Jeffrey, Chip, Brooks, and a new one, Finn. So I would, I would like your support. I graduated from Horse Branch Elementary. I graduated from Ohio County High School in 1981. I graduated from Berea College with a BA degree in history. I have a, a degree from a Heritage Christian University, so I think my education uh, qualifies me. I, Larry, I hate, I hate you said only qualify because I, I haven't been a master, but I'm qualified. Uh, my education uh, uh, has been good in my Experience level. I've been the coordinator of the Horse Branch Family Resource Center for going on 31 years. And, and what I do at that school helps me, I think, for being a master. Because we do needs assessment, find out what we need to do, and then we do work plans to, to show you how to fix those needs. And then we have to get a budget to go along with that. See, all those things, needs assessment, surveys, budgets, work plans, and also I've been finding community resources for 31 years. And you know, we have to find community resources because of a lack of funding. As Mr. Morphew said, we're gonna have a lack of uh, funding in a few years, so we gotta find those resources. And, and I've had experience doing that now for 31 years. And when a client comes in my office, they know that, that they're the number one person that, at that time because I'm trying to take care of their problems. I've been taking care of the families of Ohio County for 31 years. Those community resources is very important because nobody wants taxes, do they? Nobody wants taxes, so we want to do the best we can to get around that, don't we? I've also preached at the New Baymans Church of Christ for 24 years. 
and it's up on 919 in the corner of New Bainus Road. I've also served on the Ohio County Water Board many years, a treasurer for a while, uh, dealing with big budgets, construction pro uh, projects on that. And uh, our uh, uh, water board is very important because of all the water lines that we have. I'm very familiar with those. I also served on the uh, uh, Cooperative Extension Agency, so the youth of Ohio County. Uh, our 4-H program is very good, and, and I want to continue to support that. As Tim pointed out, and, and as Mr. Callaway pointed out, you know, econo their economic uh, is very important in it. Increase economic opportunities. Of course, we need more jobs, we need better pay, don't we? And qualified workforce, as Mr. Callaway said. Uh, we have some uh, opportunities, I think, in the fifth district for, for agribusiness, for small business. Very important to, uh, in our area, the family farm is very important and I'll support the family farms, small businesses, agribusiness, uh, maintain roads. Y'all know out in the fifth district roads are very important. Hey, your kids drive those school buses on those roads and bridges and uh, very important. And as Tim mentioned, the internet, very needful in Ohio County, especially in our area. Uh, we did get some in the Rosine area, but the, the hills and hollers up there makes it hard. We need to do all we can, and I know I know our leaders is looking at that. I will support, uh, if elected, I will support our senior citizens. Our senior citizens, I think, are very, we, we do good in Ohio County, but as a whole, across the state and across the nation, our senior citizens are underserved, and we need to work on that. I will support our veterans. Our veterans, very important. Uh, how much time I got? Oh my goodness! You're in the red. I will say. Hey, how much time? How much time will Larry get? <laughs> You're over. Cool. Hey, I do appreciate your support and vote. Sorry. Hey, I got some more good ideas. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now we'll go back up to uh, first district magistrate Michael McKenna. McKinney. Thank you. I really don't have anything prepared either, but as most of you may know, that know me, my name's Michael McKinney and I don't have any problem talking. So uh, I can fill this time up really easily. I was born and raised here in Ohio County. I was actually born in Ohio County Hospital, 1974. We're not gonna go that far back, but a little bit about myself and my, my kids I'm really proud of. Nicholas had just recently graduated from Brescia University and he's continuing there with his uh, MBA and I'm proud of him. Russell's graduating this year from Ohio County High School, and he's gonna be going to Western Kentucky University where he's gonna be studying civil engineering. Really proud of my family, glad that they're here today to support me. Uh, past politics, for me, 2011, 2014, I held this office as a Democrat. So let's get the elephant out of the room. Boy, we're all elephants now. I was conservative Democrat, didn't realize it at the time, a lot of things have changed. A lot of people have changed their party. I'm not ashamed to have been a Democrat, but I'm very proud now to be a Republican and to serve Ohio County as your first district magistrate in this upcoming election. For uh, those of you that don't know me, um, I've worked here in Ohio County most all my life. I uh, was born and raised here, raised my family here. I'm really proud to be a person of Ohio County. I want this community to be better for everyone, not just people of the first district. People of the first district, those of you in here may or may not know which district you're in. A lot of people ask, what does a magistrate do? Well, I'm not here to explain that, but I will tell you that as a magistrate, I helped Jason and the other magistrates uh, balance a budget. And at that time we had co-service dollars, which made it a lot easier. And I know that in the next few years, we don't have those funds. So we've got to increase our funding from somewhere, and uh, let's get the elephant out of the room again. Uh, where are you gonna get money from? You've got to uh, somehow enhance the income. So I wanna work hard on a work ready community. Other people have uh, pointed out the industrial park and how great that we have that right here in a real good location geographically. 
to help other communities, other surrounding areas and counties be able to make that be a positive impact to our um, our income as well as our uh, um, facilities to uh, promote new jobs and so forth. Um, I am always going to be available and reachable. I have been in the past. Get your pens ready. I'll give you my phone number. When I get down here, I'll give it to you again. It's 270-256-2268. I don't have an answering machine. I will call you back. If you can text, text me. I will text you back. If I'm at work, I'll do it as soon as I can. I've always done that. Uh, I was always reachable before as magistrate. Won't be no different this time, except for now my kids are a little older and I won't be coaching as much baseball. Uh, another thing, we need to improve all of Ohio County, not just the first district, and I want to be part of that. Like I said before, balancing a budget's not been a problem, but it's going to become more of an issue in the upcoming years, and I think that I've got some solutions for that to help increase uh, revenue in our county entities where there is actually income produced. Income produced. Uh, I think that I've got some good ideas to make that work. Uh, countywide internet. We were working on that 12 years ago. Still don't have it. Rural areas in Ohio County right now, today, we can't have kids home from school effectively and be able to do our classroom work. I mean, we've just seen that. Still hasn't improved, but we've got to get countywide internet. It's, it's a must. Something that we need to sit down and get a solution to, not just keep talking about it. Um, whether or not we're going to build a jail or continue to operate the one that we've got, we've got to make that decision. The fiscal court does. I'd like to be part of that. Sitting on a committee 12 years ago, we had a bunch of great answers, but nothing's materialized yet. We've got to get solutions. I want to help this next court make solutions and make Ohio County better. If anyone wants to reach me again, 270-256-2268. Um, the Swart Ready community, I'm really proud to say that we've, we've accomplished that, but there's still a lot of jobs out there that aren't filled, and there's a lot of jobs out there that we need to try to acquire to fill. I wanna thank everyone for their time. God bless each and every one of you, and thank you to the Republican Party for having this event. Now we're going to move on to uh, Beaver Dam Mayor Paul Sanford. Good evening, everyone. Okay, are we still upset over last night? Come on. Good evening, everyone. There we go. It's a little better. Uh, I am Paul Sanford. I'm current mayor of Beaver Dam, Kentucky. Uh, born and raised here. Uh, my wife, Tracy, is a retired teacher from Ohio Ohio County High School. Our oldest son, Davis, teaches here at Ohio County High School. He is currently on a year leave of absence. He is going after a master's degree in something with physics at the University of Dublin in Ireland. And my youngest son is about five or six weeks away from finishing law school at Southern Illinois University, which is good. It means I can get him and my daughter-in-law back up here and start talking about grandkids. <laughs> Uh, I'm general manager of Hitachi Manufacturing at the Bluegrass Crossings uh, facility in Beaver Dam. Been out there for 15 years. We are a Toyota, Nissan, Mazda, and Super Supplier. Uh, been involved with politics for a number of years. I was magistrate in 2002, I believe it was, into six in the second district. Jason followed me up there. I was a Beaver Dam City Commissioner for two years, and now I'm in my third term as mayor. There are several things about the mayor's job in the city that I like to talk about and some that I really don't like to talk about. So we'll get the ones I don't like to talk about the way first. I don't want to get to talk about the money. But I am happy to say the city of Beaver Dam is financially secure, uh, with the exception of some uh, things in the park where you're debt free. We have been able to do all that while at the same time elevated, we built a new fire station with the city. We were able to elevate our fire chief to a full time paid position to help with the uh, volunteer fire department that services the Beaver Dam area. Very proud of that. Our police department, all seven of our officers are fully certified. We have a 24 seven coverage in the county, in the city. And of course we help out in the county as well. So those things I'm really proud about. But I just don't like to talk about that stuff. The fun stuff I like to talk about, and one thing you might hear, one of the big buzz buzzwords these days in anything, especially even in industrial development is livability. I'm the first to admit the city of Beaver Dam size 
approximately 3,600 people. There's not a lot we can do as far as incentives for some industry coming in. You know, we don't have the multi-million dollar budgets to give tax breaks. State statute won't let us give a lot of the tax breaks that a lot of people think we should be able to. But one thing that if you follow economic development very much, they look at is if we're going into a community, is it some place that we think our employees would like to live? That's one thing I felt like we could very work on hard here in Beaver Dam and Ohio County. And, and the county does a great job of it too, but we really tried to step it up a little bit. And that's one thing we've done. We have worked to bring programs here, entertainment. I've grown up here, I've heard there's nothing to do here. Well, there's not been a weekend I can think of this year since the first year, there's not been live music somewhere, Fridays and Saturday nights. I know the barn will be opening up here pretty soon in Rosine, but we've got it all. We've got stand up comedy shows. We do live music on Sundays, Friday nights, all summer long. And of course our amphitheater is one thing I'm very proud of. Uh, Hank Williams is coming to town, by the way, folks. Uh, don't know how many people realize in Ohio County you're to see Hank Williams concert. But the facilities brought in right at four, four to five million dollars over the last eight years has been in operation. That money rolls over. That stuff, I know it's bringing in tourism dollars, but it's also bringing in events that we can have our own people. We get to benefit from all of this stuff. Of course, the park, uh, my kids play baseball. I'm really happy with the baseball facilities we've got out there. We've got the playground equipment. We're trying to do everything we can to get all ages covered with something to do. Uh, I think of nothing else over the last few years. We have two years we have been city of the year in the Grand Area, Green River Area Development District. Two years we've been city of the year for the Kentucky League of Cities. We've been uh, recognized in both state and national publications. And just well, about a month ago, we were named the 2021 Governor's Award for the Arts winner, which is a very prestigious award here in the state of Kentucky. I think all that kind of speaks volumes of what we're doing for our part to try to make the community a livable community where people want to come and live, there's things to do, and let's have a good time. Uh, I, I'm going to be remiss because I'm going to get in trouble. I'm very proud of our Beaver Dam Farmers Market. I see one of our vendors here who's been very supportive of the organization. That was part of the reason we won this award was the things and activities we do there. But I am looking forward to keeping this momentum going so that we can work with the future fiscal court to keep going on economic development here in Beaver Dam and Ohio County. Appreciate it very much. And thank you all for coming out. I want to take this time to tell everyone thank you for coming tonight. Uh, when we, the group, planned this, we did not know how it would go over. And I am extremely impressed. Number one, with the people that showed up. Number two, the candidates that are willing to come out and talk. And uh, we've got visitors here from other counties watching us pretty closely. So uh, thank you everyone for coming to this very much. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take just a short break, a 15 minute break. And what I'm gonna do is uh, food trucks, shaved ice, restrooms. I'm gonna ask the sheriff's candidates, the judge's candidates and the jailer candidate after uh, our break come up to the front so we go ahead and get things started. 15 minutes, please. You know, this event would not have been possible without the volunteers that worked with us. And I would be foolish if I tried to name them all off. But a couple of them, uh, one that stands out here, well, she can't stand too far because she's the shortest one here. Taylor Ballard? Where did she go? Where'd Taylor go? She's right back here in the corner. She's the one running waters and everything. Thank you very much. working really good with the times I would ask our next speakers please uh, Jim's gonna set his clock up you can see it pretty easy and uh, we'll go ahead and get things started Tracy you're first up buddy thank you Terry thanks to all those that put this event on I know it's a lot of work and we appreciate it for those of you that don't know me I'm your sheriff Tracy Beatty I was born and raised here in Ohio County. 
on a small cattle farm near Fordsville. I'm a lifelong Republican. I've had those values instilled in me from my family. I carry those a long way back. I proudly served as your sheriff for about seven and a half years now. I've worked for the sheriff's office for the last 25 years. I campaigned on an open door policy to serve the citizens of Ohio County. You can come in and see your sheriff when you need to see your sheriff. My door is always open. I've added three new officers to the sheriff's office. One officer was an additional narcotics officer paid for through confiscated drug funds. Also, I purchased a canine to help that officer in his drug eradication here in Ohio County. We have two full-time narcotics officers. First time the sheriff's office ever had those. I've added two new school resource officers with the help of the Ohio County School Board. They are school resource officers that are assigned to our schools that interact with our children on a daily basis. They also serve as our drug prevention and education officers. As your sheriff, it has been my priority to investigate those sex abuse crimes against our children by using a, utilizing a full-time investigator to be the voice of those children that have been abused. That's all my detective does. She in, investigates those sex abuse cases uh, for those children and, and even some of the adults. I'm very proud to, to say that. As your sheriff, it's important to me that our deputies act in a professional manner and exceed the expectations of our citizens. I've been able to retain good, well-trained officers by fighting for pay increases for those officers. This helps us keep good, trained employees here in Ohio County, and, and they don't have to move off to make a decent pay for what they do. They're not paid enough, I assure you. As your sheriff, I've made it a priority to equip our officers with equipment so they can do their jobs. That be guns, cars, ammunition, uh, any kind of uh, tools that they need to do their job, I've made it a priority to make sure they're out there with what they need. I've been able to utilize the drug fund to make some of that happen too. As your sheriff, I've worked closely with fiscal court and with confiscated drug funds, been able to build one of the best fleets of patrol cars the sheriff's office has ever had. I'm very proud of our fleet. That, that's been working right alongside the fiscal court. They've, they've been there to help me. Those cars are there and they can get to your needs. When you need them, they're gonna drive those cars to wherever you need them. We don't have to worry about them breaking down or, or tearing up, we've got a good fleet. As a sheriff, I've been able to build a shooting range on existing county property for our officers. We used to have to go, the whole group of us have to go to Hancock County and we utilize their shooting range. The, the fiscal court allowed us to, a piece of ground that was existing in the county. Myself and several of my officers, we ran equipment, built berms. So we have now a shooting range here that is utilized not only by us, but the city police here and the state police also. So I'm proud of that. As your sheriff, I've proven that I can efficiently collect your tax dollars by collecting over $9 million yearly with a state audit to back that up. And our state auditor's here somewhere, I just talked to him. Um, we, we also apply for an AUP audit, which saves us money. That means that we're doing the right thing uh, and, and we, we are by the book and there's no issues with our audits. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, my tax lady's here tonight too. I'm not gonna put her on the spot, but she helps us a lot. When I ran for office in 2015, I made a promise to have a 24-hour patrol. I've kept that promise by having a deputy out in a car 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That means that deputy is in that car. He's not called out from home. He is in that car patrolling our county. Now, we have a large county. We're about the fifth largest in area in the state, about 24,500 people, I think, last I checked. <clears throat> the big area to cover. We've got about 10 road deputies and I assure you we're overworked. 
last I checked, were about uh, 700 calls last month. I look for that to be about a thousand calls for those 10 deputies. This is the first time in history that the sheriff's office has had a 24 hour patrol when somebody's out in a car patrolling your, your community. I'm proud of that. As, as your sheriff, I've joined forces with Kenny Rob Drug Task Force to help eradicate drugs in Ohio County, along with a combined effort with the state police and the city agencies we have here in Ohio County. As your sheriff, I'm proud to say for the first time in the history of the sheriff's office, we've been accredited. My staff and I have worked hard on this accreditation. We are one of 24 counties out of 120 counties in the state that are accredited. This accreditation is developed by the Kentucky Association of Police and Chief, Police Chiefs. This demonstrates that we meet commonly accepted standards for efficient and effective operation. We're just not making up our own rules. We, we have guidelines that we work by. In my 25 years as Sheriff's Office, I've dedicated my life to the Sheriff's Office. I've had opportunities to be a policeman for other agencies, including the state police, and I didn't go. I, I felt that my heart was here in Ohio County, and I have been at the Sheriff's Office for 25 years. I've worked my way up from deputy, then to sergeant, captain, chief deputy. I've dedicated my life to the Sheriff's Office. I ask for your vote, humbly ask for your vote, support the Bay primary. I'm committed to Ohio County, I'm dedicated to you. Thank you, appreciate it. Tony, you just got a break because the sheriff beat you on overtime. <laughs> Next we'll have for Sheriff Adam Wright. Thank you guys. For those who don't know me, my name is Adam Wright. I drew my first breath of air here in Ohio County in 1979. I was born to Gary and Sherry Wright, also here in Beaverdam. I live here in Beaverdam with my fiance, Allie Markway, Markwell. I don't have any children, but I got a dog named Maggie, and I think she takes up much of my time, just like a kid would. Uh, for those, I won't go into a full detail, but those who may not know me and know my story, I started my career as a uh, public service at the age of 16. I joined the Beaverdam Fire Department as a junior firefighter, which allowed certain kids in the high school here to be part of the emergency program, to show them ways and set examples and set, you know, to be a perfect citizen here in the county. That kind of sparked my interest, but I'll tell you what my real interest that got me going the, into the law enforcement experience was, I had three models. I had my grandfather, Julian Radcliffe, who was a Kentucky State Trooper. I had my dad, who was a deputy sheriff. And for those that remember the program, Chips, I was gonna be a highway patrolman for, with the motorcycle crew, but yeah, well, I couldn't make out of California because that's the way they think. So <laughs> good Lord knows what they're doing. So uh, I ended my career with Kentucky State Police uh, last uh, January, or correction, December 31st. And I had a lot of questions said, why did you leave the state police? I've done pretty much everything in the state police that you could do. The next step was to promote. And that meant for me to have to move away. I've already been to Pikeville once. I stayed out there for two years and I didn't want to leave home again. I did everything from patrol unit. I was detective, I was detective year, detective of the year, two years consecutive row for my handling of cases and the high volume with cold cases as well. I think that experience and the un the unlarge amount of support of people who have encouraged me to run for sheriff here in Ohio County. Because of that, I will be a working sheriff. I will constantly be here full time. I don't have any extracurricular activities that will keep me from being 24 seven, seven days a week. I think it'll also be important for me to be out at night, seeing how the community reacts during nighttime, interact with the deputy to see what challenges they have as well. I've set my heart and goal to everything that I've ever done. I have a lot of awards. I've been, uh, I've got a lot of commendations throughout my law enforcement experience. And I don't tell you that to get up here and gloat and brag about myself, but I'm telling you that because when I set my, when I set my heart and mind to something, I give it my 110%. I just don't do it because of the title. I didn't become a trooper just because I wanted the title of trooper. I didn't do it just because I want to drive the gray car up and down the parkway. 
I did it because I want to make a change for my community. And the time now is for me to come to Ohio County, lead and make an example, and do the best I can for, the, for you guys. My last and not least, the one thing I want to do is I want to make a sheriff's department that's good to work with, good to work for, and most importantly, be happy and that you guys are impressed and you're proud to have that department here in your community. On May 17th, I ask for your vote. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move to Judge Executive David Johnson. He'll be up first. Thank you. Appreciate everybody coming out, uh, taking your time to uh, listen to this forum. Uh, very proud to be here. Most of you know me, but uh, I'm David Johnston, your current uh, Ohio County Judge Executive. I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Ohio County, except for the short time I was gone to military service, I spent two years in the U.S. Army. I graduated from Ohio County High School in 1969. <clears throat> uh, I was married to Barbara Jones Johnston for 45 years until her death in 2016. I have four brothers who I'm uh, very close to, many nieces and nephews, and uh, many adopted nieces and nephews, and many friends that are like family. So I appreciate every one of them. Before being elected judge in 2010, I served as the first park director in Ohio County for 26 years. There we built a park on abandoned strip mine land, as well as purchased much more land for other parks at no cost to Ohio County. None of those parks cost the same thing. We've accomplished many things since I've been in office. For one thing, our county is nearly debt free. And when I came in, there was a lot of, you know, we owed a lot of money. We paid a whole lot of that off. Uh, we've also, uh, uh, and we've accomplished many things, including roads and bridges, improving our economy, and making our community business friendly, and improving our quality of life. I served as a member of GRAD for 12 years. You know, GRAD is, uh, is the link between county and state government. Uh, there are seven counties in our uh, ad district, which is called GRAD. I was also the uh, chairman of that GRAD board for two years. That helped me with contacts with many people that would allow resources for our county. We've partnered with OCTC to uh, provide work source development. We gave $25,000 to the, that school because they serve so many students from our county. We taught many, many to uh, in the uh, HVAC, the welding, and many other of the trades. My strong pursuit is bringing our share of federal and state funds home. During our recent disasters, the tornado and the flooding, we were able to get FEMA here quickly. They're paying for the cleanup on our roadways, so our road crew does it and they reimbursed them. And we insisted that they met with all the tornado victims as well. Before that, we got to reconstruct the bank on a mile of Rough River that was affecting our roadways. And that happened just recently as well. Um, I've been able to get extra money from co-severance tax that wouldn't just automatically come, but we had to go seek it. State transportation funds, over and over, we get money from, uh, from there in, in several different uh, ways. And I'm constantly on the phone with uh, officials that can make that happen. Uh, and what you, not just the heads, head officials, and elected officials, but I know the staff members in, the, on, in those departments that do the paperwork. And, uh, they, and we've been able to get so much money that way. We uh, have many things going on right now that I would like uh, Ohio County to complete, including our recovery pro program, which we call ARCH. It's giving people a second chance uh, and not go back in jail once they've got out, but give them all the tools they need to uh, not uh, reoffend. 
We're working on a regional jail, park expansion, recruiting new industry, and improving broadband. Yes, we are. Through Kentucky Wire, keep improving Connect Grad, which we own, but we'll keep working on it. And the most recent thing is we're working with utility companies. A law was passed this week to allow the utility companies to provide broadband. That's something our fiscal court and I have been working for a long time to uh, get the okay for uh, those utility companies to provide broadband. It's my policy to help anyone to come in with an issue any way that I can. We have a leadership team that will help as well. And anyone will provide the services to you through that staff. I am humbly asking for your vote and support and I have five seconds less. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Judge Executive, we got Regal. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. It's an honor and pleasure to be here tonight, and uh, I'd like to thank my fan club back there in the back for supporting me, and uh, they've always been there for me. And uh, why am I up here? I'm up here because I want to make a change in Ohio County. I want to make Ohio County strong. I want to bring jobs to Ohio County. When you have jobs, you have more tax revenue, and we got to get more jobs here in Ohio County good paying jobs. And that comes along with economic development in all parts of Ohio County, not just Beaver Dam, not just Hartford. We got to reach out to areas. Ohio County is large, you know, we're a real big county, but we just can't focus on just one area. We got two industrial parks. We got two road spurs. We got a railroad. We got a navigational river. I mean, we, we are, uh, we just have great opportunity and potential for economic development in this county. So uh, you probably wonder who I am. My name's Ray Goff. I'm running for County Judge Executive. And I grew up in Ohio County. I graduated here. I ate lunch in this lunchroom back in 1979. I played basketball out there on that floor. And uh, I love Ohio County. I love the people of Ohio County. And, uh, and that's the main reason I'm here. Uh, like I said, after I uh, graduated from Ohio County, I went to Western Kentucky University and got a bachelor's degree at Western Kentucky University in education. And from there, I went on into the Air Force and I spent 28 years in the Air, a little over 28 years that I spent in the Air Force. I, I worked in security forces. And it's really like, uh, Oh, it's like police work, law enforcement. I worked in intelligence. I worked uh, in U.S. embassies. I worked on presidential details. I guess I worked on at least five or six presidential details from Ronald Reagan up to George Bush. And I, I got to, I was around a lot of politicians. I'm not a, I don't consider myself a politician. This is, this, this is a whole new world for me right here. So, um, but uh, I had a great career in the Air Force. And after I got out of the Air Force, uh, I came back to Kentucky. I started my own business, uh, OSHA training business here in Ohio County. I've worked with Dysel. I've worked with uh, Purdue and doing some of their OSHA training. Unfortunately, COVID put a lot of us out of that kind of business with classrooms inside of uh, manufacturing. So my business took a took a kind of a, a dive from COVID, but, uh, and right now I've, uh, I guess the tornado kind of brought me, uh, back out of retirement. And, uh, for those who are affected by the tornado, we have some more tornado victims here tonight and, uh, we're going to have a meeting on, uh, March 28th. I think it is yeah, March 28th at the community center and uh, a lot of those tornado victims, but, the tornado, uh, it, it, it motivated me to be here tonight to run for county judge executive. Uh, the tornado, when it came to Ohio County, it touched every part of Ohio County from Centertown all the way up to Pattyville. Does everybody know where Pattyville is? <laughs> so it's, Ohio County is a large county. 
back when uh, I was uh, like a young uh, young man or a young boy, my dad was a school superintendent here, Rico Golf. Uh, some of you might remember him. My uncle was uh, Cecil Golf, the Ohio County basketball coach, and. Uh, Dad would take me out sometimes to look at the roads. He would have to make a decision on whether to close the roads and we would ride around Ohio County and I just, we were just out in some areas. I, did, I had no idea where I was. And from Hell's Neck to Pattyville to Rockport. I mean, Ohio County is an enormous, large county. It has a lot of roads. That's a big part of being a county judge executive. You've got to maintain the roads in Ohio County and maintain the money, be a good steward of the money. And I will, if I'm elected, I will be a good steward of the money. I'll be transparent, I'll be honest, uh, I'll be available. I'm retired, so I have a lot of time to, to be available. I've, I've got two kids, they're grown kids, they're in Nashville, they live in Nashville, and they couldn't be here because they couldn't get off their jobs. But, uh, and I've, I've got a dog named Rocco, He's a rescue dog, and that's a big part of uh, helping the animal control here in Ohio County. It's going to be one of my agenda items, along with economic development. Um, what else? Um, I guess three of my big big items, economic development and uh, broadband internet. I was a communications officer also in the Air Force, so I have, I have a background in fiber optics, in communication, satellite technology, and uh, so I have an internet service providers. Yes, the Air Force did invite, did invent the uh, internet. It wasn't Al Gore that invented the internet. It was the Air Force. But I worked in, I was trained in communications also, and so I have a big background in uh, internet, fiber optics, and a lot of the things that drive our social media, our uh, cell phones, stuff like that. So. I, I've got a large background. I was a deputy commander also. While I was in the Air Force, I dealt with multi-million dollar contracts, federal. I had state employees along with federal employees. So I had uh, over 100 in my squadron and I had 50 or 60 state employees that worked for me. So I have a diverse background in, uh, in funding and uh, I'm a big proponent of emergency management. I want to thank our emergency management, our police folks for responding down during the tornado. Sheriff Beatty, you, your guys did a great job. And we, uh, we had only a few incidents of theft there. I mean, I think one, but it curtailed and uh, Sheriff Beatty's folks were out there. And I appreciate that. The county road folks, along with the, uh, the county and the state, they did a great job out there in clearing the roads for us. Uh, just kind of close. I think it's just on my end here, but I'd, I'd like your vote. Uh, I will do a great job for Ohio County. I'll make it strong, and God bless America, and God bless Ohio County. All right, next up will be Jailer Landon Spurlock. We only got 30 seconds left. I might only need 30 seconds so I can get through this. Uh, well, uh, hello everyone. My name is Landon Sparlock and I'm running for the office of Ohio County Jailer. Uh, you know, I'd first I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight, uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Uh, and I hope this is beneficial for the candidates and the uh, voters because you are the ones that, that make a difference and, and matter. Uh, I'm going to get something out of the way real quick. I'm 26 years old. Uh, I'm probably the youngest candidate in here. Bo Bennett, where are you at? Bo, yeah, I think he's a little bit older than I am, so I just want to clear the air there. I'm 26 years old. Uh, I started my law enforcement career in 2018 with the Ohio County Sheriff's Office. I completed the 20-week uh, Department of Criminal Justice Training Academy in 2019, uh, and I'm still currently certified through the state of Kentucky. Uh, currently, I'm fully employed by Bobby Electrals and Sons through the Union 1392, and I hold a volunteer position for special deputy at the Sheriff's Office. Um, while patrolling uh, the streets and the roads of Ohio County and getting out in your communities, I realize that I rely heavily on my academy training, uh, whether that be uh, criminal investigations, 
drone procedures or firearms. Uh, and if elected jailer, I would like to implement uh, organize a routine training for all deputy jailers. Uh, one example would be taser training and certification, which we could accomplish in-house with the help of uh, other law enforcement agencies locally. Uh, some other examples would be defensive tactics, things like that. Uh, these trainings uh, would benefit both deputy jailers and inmates uh, and continue to make the jail a safe place. As the old saying goes, idle hands are the devil's workshop. And I agree with this statement. So if elected jailer, I would like to support our county's litter, litter abatement program by allowing qualified inmates to clean up litter throughout the county under the proper supervision. Uh, the county has also implemented the ARCH program, uh, which is assist, which help us uh, release inmates finding jobs, uh, housing, other tools to help them be successful. Um, I've heard good things about the program uh, from the fiscal board meetings I've been to, and I would love to support that program as well. Uh, another thing, addiction is a huge problem, not only in our county, but in our nation. Uh, I know everybody here has plays a family or a loved one that has suffered from addiction. Um, you know, as a jailer, I would love to support and, and help work towards programs in the jail uh, that, uh, that address those issues. Um, another one of my duties as deputy uh, was inmate transports. I did transports all over the state. Uh, Ohio County currently has a contract with Christian County to house our state inmates and our overflow inmates. Uh, as jailer, I would work uh, to try to find a closer facility uh, that would save money on the fuel, the vehicle maintenance, uh, and also have a deputy back in Ohio County quicker. Because uh, if, if they're in a facility 30 minutes away versus an hour away, uh, it's quicker turnaround time, you save on fuel, you save on uh, you know paying that deputy that time to travel there and back. Um, and it's also easier on the loved ones uh, who have to visit these family members in, in jail. Uh, they can get there without having to travel so far. Uh, you know, these are just some of my uh, ideas and, and that I have for the jail. And I know y'all been here for a while, so in, in short, uh, I would just like to say that, you know, I would love the opportunity to serve the county as jailer. Um, you know, the only thing I can promise is to work hard, and that's a promise I can keep. Um, and congratulations on Rip. I know he's retiring. He's done a great job at the jail, uh, and I wish him well in his retirement. Um, and I respectfully ask for your vote and support for him. I was the one that uh, started talking about dysfunction, and I had people make comments, well, like, Terry, this is only a county election. It's, it's no big deal. Yes, it is. Every one of these people that are running for these offices work for us. They are our representatives up the ladder. And now we're getting ready. We're going to start with some of the big dogs. Uh, U.S. House Representative District 2, we have Brett Guthrie running, and Justin is going to speak for him. Hello, everyone. My name is Justin Poland. I'm glad to be here. Thank you all so much for putting this on. A quick little side note before I go into the spiel that I prepared. Uh, I really got to enjoy some time just out of... Uh, out of high school in Ohio County uh, for about six months. Uh, I worked on y'all's uh, water and sewer lines back in 2000, 2007 to, uh, to get those done. So I, I spent a lot of time, you know, at the Mexican restaurant and at the, uh, the hotel down there because that's where they put us up at. Back then there was still a Denny's there, but I'm sure Wendy still has that Baconator. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, great to see y'all. My name is Justin Poland. I'm here on behalf of Congressman Brett Guthrie. Thanks to the Ohio County GOP for putting this on. And uh, for all y'all do for the Republican Party, it means so much. Uh, Brett, sorry he can't be here tonight, but his congressional duties had him uh, in Washington where he's doing everything he can uh, to, uh, to stop Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi's uh, dangerous agenda. The uh, radical left, they just take things way too far all the time. I know Ohio County is uh, new to the 2nd District, for, so for those of you who don't know who Brad is, uh, let me tell you a little bit about him. Brad's always proud to, uh, and he's really proud to be endorsed by the National Right to Life and the National Rifle 
Association, that's the NRA, uh, because he always stands up for our shared Kentucky pro-life, pro-gun, pro-family values. Uh, right as the top Republican in Congress working to, to stop the flow of fentanyl across the southern border, his plan is uh, pretty simple. Build a wall, stop the drugs, and stop the criminals. Put America first. Uh, Brett will always fight for secure elections and to stop ballot fraud and ensure election integrity. Uh, Brett is fighting back on Joe Biden's Green New Deal policies that are putting liberal ideals over Kentuckians' pocketbooks. Inflation's out of control, and Joe Biden and the liberals must be stopped. I mean, it's a simple fact. We gotta stop them. Uh, while Brett wasn't able to be here tonight, he enjoyed his visit at the county GOP meeting a couple weeks ago and made a video for all of you tonight. The setup of this event doesn't allow for me to play the video, but I have it over here at the table if you want to stop by and give me your information, or if you'd like to watch it here, you're more than welcome to stop by. Uh, we'd love to share it with you. And uh, I look forward to chatting with each, you, each of you, and uh, please visit brettguthrie.com to uh, learn more. Next speaker up will be uh, Lee Watts. Okay, my name is Lee Watts and I'm running for the United States Congress. And let me tell you the reason why, because I do not believe that our current congressman is doing things that a Republican should be doing. Uh, and I'm going to be talking a lot about that tonight. I'm going to tell you about my background. I'm going to tell you where I stand on the issues and then what separates me from my opponent. Uh, first of all, a little bit about me. Uh, again, Lee Watts, a good way to remember is what's his name. Uh, that's a good way to remember me. Uh, I grew up here in the second district over in Bowling Green. Uh, I went to elementary school there, junior high, high school, college. Uh, I was married there, spent nearly 30 years of my life living in the second district. Uh, then the United States military, like Mr. Gluck, I joined the United States Air Force in high. Uh, they shipped me all over the world, including a combat tour in Baghdad during the war. Uh, then after that, I came back home to Kentucky, and I took a job as a volunteer chaplain to the Kentucky State Capitol, a job that I currently still hold. I've done that now for 13 years. Uh, I like to say, I'm going to write a book about everything that those guys do up there. I'm going to make a million bucks, cause all the, and I'll never sell a copy, because all those guys will pay me not to publish. <laughs> So uh, that's what I do right now. Uh, also, two years ago, when Hank Bashir decided to close churches, but keep the abortion clinics open, and close the mom and pop stores, uh, but to keep the big box stores open, uh, I thought that was wrong. Uh, so I uh, started a YouTube channel called Patriot Point uh, that I hope you will watch. It'll tell you a lot about where I stand on the issues, uh, about what's really going on, and what you can do about it. Now, a little bit about where I stand on the issues. Uh, let's talk about gas prices, first of all. Uh, gas prices right now are higher than your chances of having a tragic accident if you have dirt on Hillary Clinton, uh, which is pretty high. Uh, so the answer to this is open the stinking pipeline. All right, uh, this is the very first thing that we should be doing. Now, I am not going to be mudslinging on my opponent. That would be inappropriate, talking about personal issues. But I believe that there is a giant difference between mudslinging and showing the official voting record. And I think that's something that the people should know and what separates me from my opponent. Uh, first of all, I'd like to see Anthony Fauci fired. Uh, I think he has lied to the American people. Uh, there is a, my opponent talks about this. There is a bill written by Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene called the Fire Fauci Act. It has been out in Congress now for almost one full year, and my opponent refuses to put his name on it. Uh, so I think actions speak louder than words. It's House Resolution 2316. Uh, I am for protecting our gun rights. I carry usually three things on me at all times, the Bible, a Constitution, and a nine millimeter, and I know how to use all three. Uh, and I think if you lose your gun rights, you will quickly lose all of the rest of your rights as well. My opponent says he is for gun rights. However, on the 23rd of September last year, he voted for House Resolution 4350, which takes away guns from some of our veterans. Uh, he says he didn't support it, but he did vote for it. If you vote for it, 
your actions speak louder than your words. Uh, as far as border security, I think we should immediately build the wall. Uh, my opponent says that. However, he voted for uh, a bill which allowed in 2021, on the, in June, that allowed for 1.8 million illegal invaders to all get amnesty for crossing the border. This bill goes on just to grant them all citizenship, uh, which I would very much be opposed to. Uh, I am for election integrity. I do not believe that our last election was legal, that it was honest, and yet my opponent voted to certify that. I am a combat veteran and very much for putting America first. Uh, my opponent, however, is a career congressman who has been serving in politics since the 1990s. Let me ask everybody a question. How are these career congressmen working out for you? Not working out so well for the United States. So I think this is supposed to be a government of the people, not of career congressmen. Uh, I've got a lot of promotional items on my table back there. Thank you very much. Uh, signs and bumper stickers and car magnets. And uh, feel free to take all of those. Uh, we got a lot of support across the state. Uh, I just this week had to order a second order of 15,000 signs. So I hope you'll see watch his name signs over. I've served our country in uniform. I have served our state up in the state house. And with your support, I'll be very happy to serve as your voice in Washington, D.C. My name is Lee Watts. Thank you very much. Next up would be Brett Fair. Fair. Yeah. How's everybody doing? We all woke up now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, for those that don't know, my name is Brent Fair, and um, as I'm actually born and raised about 20 minutes from here, so pretty excited to be here tonight. But I've come today as your neighbor asking for a helping hand and allow me to be your next U.S. representative. And while it is true that I own arcades and I have a mobile entertainment business that services throughout the state of Kentucky and Indiana, and I have a racing complex down in Gatlinburg and all this stuff going on, um, don't let that fool you by, by any means. Uh, when I started my businesses, <laughs> um, I was a 25 year old with hardly anything in the bank account except the uh, capability of borrowing almost uh, 100 grand in credit card debt. <laughs> so while I wouldn't advise most folks to do that, I was fortunate enough, I crushed the numbers, I knew what I had to do, and I only rolled the cars over once before paying off everything. So uh, business is something I've been a part of and uh, something I've uh, been striving to do. I never planned on running for, for politics, that's for, for darn sure. But that's just a, a bit that shows how broken the system really is that I even had to go through that route, right? But no, uh, I come from humble beginnings. My mother's a nurse, my father's a union carpenter, and uh, I wouldn't have changed a thing for, that is the sole reason I understood the true value of a dollar when growing up and just how hard it was to work in order to, to provide for your family in today's era. Now, I can sit up here and I can hit the Fox News talking points, if that's what you're wanting, until we're all like blue in the face, right? Um, and while one could assume just where I stand on many issues based on the fact that I am running for a Republican, um, I would still advise that you each visit my website at brentfair.com just to see where I stand on a lot of the issues. Uh, pretty, pretty simple on that. but. I want to use this brief period of time that I have to kind of explain the reasons as to why I ran for Congress in the first place. Um, because for the last six years plus, Republicans have been scrutinized and ran through the ringer when it comes to news media, um, when it comes to social media, and throughout the community in general. And I began to question why my representative was not out being more vocal on the issues that matter, speaking up and defending our rights when they were being trampled upon. And with all the censorship that took place, Studies showing, you know, 95% of folks that were deplatformed were conservative or right-leaning, which we all knew, but studies show. Uh, so I dug into this and realized that Guthrie is only emboldening the movement. He is voting on bills to increase the department funding to create more censorship. And he did that in 2019. And then in 2020, and most of you may not have heard because this bill didn't pass, but he presented a bill to Congress, a sole bill, without any co-sponsor or anything like that, they call it the Countering Online Harms Act. <laughs> and this, if passed, would have allowed the Federal Trade Commission the ability, the ability to use, and, uh, use AI, artificial intelligence, 
and if you're familiar with that, to combat this, dismiss and malinformation. And that would be on a broad scale. That wouldn't be like a platform like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. That would be the entirety of the web. Dangerous stuff. And then when you read further into the bill, you see that he's targeting those who are deemed terrorists and violent extremists, and especially those who could be seen as interfering in the next U.S. election. So at a time when parents are deemed terrorists, the Hunter Biden laptop and the Ukraine scandals deemed conspiracy. And <laughs> if you used to go online right now and to say, there is only two genders as fact, you are deemed an extremist. In those times, our representative, our congressman thought that this was a good bill to present. Yeah, I can't, I can't stand for that. Now, I have to see most of these folks on the state and federal level two, three times a week, sometimes twice the same day. And most of these events, I cannot speak at. And uh, every time I do hit an event I can speak at, it seems he never shows, so it is what it is. But I just sit back and listen to this man sit and talk about the border wall and how we need to secure our borders, and fentanyl's a big problem and all this. And yes, that's true. I believe I can speak for most everybody in here when I can say, we need to build the wall, right? Yeah, I see. I'm not good at the one-liner punches, I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, he wants to sit and talk about how he was just down there three months ago, and I'm sitting here going, well, we just got done scrutinizing Kamala Harris for, you know, not getting there until nine months ago. And well, he didn't get down there with the Freedom Caucus, and he wasn't at the, the midst of the whole thing. And how sincere is that? So I dig into it. <laughs> like, what is what is he really talking about here? Well, then I realized in 2019, if y'all are familiar or remember, this was a big issue. We cannot get funding for the border wall. That's why Biden was able to end this. We cannot get the, the funding we needed. Um, and 95% of conservatives were banded together on this and fighting against not one, but two spending bills that went across the Congress. And Guthrie was one out of just very few, like I said, over 95%, that jumped ship and voted in favor of passing the spending bills, even though they did not include the funding for the wall. So I hold him responsible for that. But since the Republicans talked about a possible shutdown in 2019, if y'all recall, during the appropriations bill, he was then banned with the Democrats and passed a bill that allowed for federal spending to be deemed mandatory. And that's why we didn't see a shutdown, because it's now irrelevant. And he did that. So our balance of power in the Congress is now belittled because of that law. And the shutdown is meaningless at this point. No, I have to listen to him talk about the national debt and the 30 trillion that we now accumulated and how we can't just kick the can down the road. We have to figure this out and not rely on our future generations to pay all this debt. I'm one of those future generations and I don't find it sincere when you're looking at a man that was against the conservative budget in 2013. And then he voted in favor of raising the deficit, decreasing discretionary spending, because God forbid we know who and where the money's going, and increase overall spending in 2017, 2018, 2019. And then in 2020, oh golly gosh, this man, he put his foot down and said, well, you know, we just spent a little too much. I'm gonna vote in favor of not raising the deficit. Look at me, I'm a good Republican. Well, you already passed a $2 trillion stimulus package that allowed for the Federal Reserve to go on a spending spree. So no, I don't find it sincere. And this district needs change. We can't stand for it. And now he's in favor of the sanctions on Russia. <laughs> and I want to talk about this. I just wrote this on the way here, so I'm sorry if I'm stumbling a bit. But he's wanting to increase more sanctions on Russia and pushing them further away from the use of the dollar and into the hands of China and the yuan currency. OPEC's doing the same. Saudi Arabia's doing the same. They're going to start trading on the yuan currency instead of the petrodollar, the U.S. dollar that holds our economy together. So these sanctions are not just crippling Russia, but they're crippling our economy. And yet, in a time when we should be strengthening our defenses, building up our economy and helping gain not just energy independence, but pharmaceutical independence, mere financial independence, so we are not relying on China and others in maintaining our own peace and sovereignty. We cannot stand for this. I'm sick of the hypocrisy, I'm sick of the lies, so I ask that come May 17th, you vote on the average day-to-day -day citizen who was born and raised right here on the road, down the road. A man that is going to fight for you each and every day because he understands that you are the employer, not the employee.
And that every decision should be based on what you have to pay for. Gosh, that. All right. So show up, show out, and on May 17th, please vote fair. Thank you. Next up, we'll have Kentucky Senator Tammy Strandfield. Strand? Strandfield? Nope. It's a stain. Like a stain on the floor at a football field. Hi, everyone. My name is Tammy Stainfield, and um, I'm running for the United States Senate. And a lot of people um, do not understand what the United States Senate is responsible for, but it's for creating laws for the United States of America. And what you're supposed to do is to represent the state that elects you into office. So when I go to Washington, I'm here, I'm there to represent Kentucky. And that is the role of a U.S. Senator. And one of the things that I, I think brings um, skills to the table for me is, um, my, is my life. And everyone's been talking about this today. But one of the things that Americans don't know and Kentucky does not know is there's guarantees in the Constitution of the United States. And there's also rights granted to citizens. And we hear over and over about guns, but there's also other rights. You cannot deprive a citizen of their right to life, liberty, happiness, law, and property. These are rights that states are required to give to their citizens. I grew up in rural New Hampshire. My high school was one hour bus ride from me, and their graduating class was 160 people. When I went to school, as many as of your children and many of you, when you went in there, none of you ever thought the kid sitting next to you, whether you liked him or if you loved him, would not have a house, would not have children because they could not afford it, that they would not have the right to religion, that they would not have a right to a common job. These are basic rights that a citizen of the United States is granted in our Constitution, and they're being deprived. Nowadays, people go to school, and when they leave, all of a sudden, they're second-class citizens. And many of these men in here have talked about college. I went to college, I went to Indiana State, and I have a computer science degree. And I got to play with the best in the world in technology. However, what's important to understand is when I went to high school, and many of you, and many of you in this room today, like my mom and dad, they never went to college. In 1940, there was 118 million white people in America. 87 million had never attended high school. 87 million had never attended high school. These individuals went and worked at IBM. They worked at NCR. My mother, she had a CRT. It wasn't a PC, a personal computer, but it was a CRT. She had a job that was able to afford a, a beautiful house. She was able to afford three children. Her children could go to college. They, nowadays, people can't afford to go to college. And here's the biggest thing, only 25% need to go to college. So in all of your businesses, I agree, trade schools are great. I believe college is great. But I also believe human beings have the capability to do many of these jobs that people could do a long time ago. And people have got to start, start fighting their state governors and their representatives to be sure that they have housing in the community that they can afford, because that is a basic right. And when you start creating secondhand citizens, you start having more sheriffs, you start having more cops. For one thing, you create absolute bitterness and hate that these people, and in our generation, one generation ago, their parents had a house. They were treated with respect. They went to church. They, they, nobody knew if they went to college or if they didn't. And we need to change this system and protect Americans again. I also went to Africa and spent seven years in Africa. So I have experience in international and working with the United Nations. I spent 
probably about 12 years in San Francisco. I worked in the IT industry and I also worked for the e-learning industry. I started my career in banking. I worked for NCR Data Center. We had over 150 banks that we processed and I'm highly technical. And there's a crisis in the internet industry right now that they somehow now think they are a judicial system, that they can uh, judge what freedom of speech is and they're overtaking the actual government judicial system. We have, we have significant unstable people in Washington right now. And the reason that I decided to run for office is in my professional career, and most of it is in corporate America, I have never witnessed in the last 10 years more content that is absolutely ignorant. It is unstable people who is mocking Americans. On a daily basis, the news is doing this to divide our nation. We had a great nation, and I do not know what is wrong with them. And when I get to Washington, I am going to tell the truth of what they are doing. I, I can't believe that gentlemen like Rand Paul is advocating to expedite individuals from India to take highly skilled individual jobs. He's also expediting work visas, which is very different. Expediting citizenship, expediting work visas, and these are to take jobs from highly educated Americans. He voted for five month abortions with other Republicans. What is wrong with these people? Five month abortions Republicans voted for. This is, this is bizarre that these men are doing this. We need, we need people to get educated on what these people are voting for. I, I have a speech here that I gave most of you. If you haven't, please pick one up. It's eight pages. You can learn who I am. But I also have a website, and it actually gives you a shortcut to the legislation that Mr. Rand Paul has voted for, and it is shocking what he has created for legislation. Everything from the, the, the abortion to everything to lynching to, I mean, it, it gets a little bit too weird for people who are highly educated. And what happens is then, the communities are falling apart. Everybody sees it. Houses are now becoming 150 years old. You can't remodel it. You can't find a contractor. You can't you can't afford the hundred thousand dollars to remodel it. Nobody is focused on what the role of a government is, which is to mediate people living life in a society. That is going to work, going to school, having having peace in the community. These are basic fundamental concepts of what a government's for. It's not to get you wealthy. I, I tell people every day, I don't want your donations and I don't want to give you money. I want to go to Washington and do the job of a federal senator, which is to analyze data, the good, the bad, represent everybody, and do something that is logical and based on reasoning and founded in the principles of the United States Constitution. People keep bashing our framers. They were geniuses, absolute geniuses on how to bring peace to a society. Did they get everything done in the first year? No, but they even wrote about it. They wrote about the challenges of how to get people to change radical views, how to get people to understand if you do that, there'll be peace in the community. These are basic, basic things that need to be changed. And I, I wish you'll go to the website because you'll, you'll see on there my entire CV resume about my career. You'll see technical writings on, uh, on everything from development to gender rights. And I, I'll tell you one thing, I will definitely solve the problem of definitions. I, I played on a division one field hockey team. And when you start telling me that a bisexual man is now going to be allowed to play on a female uh, field hockey team, you have lost your mind in arguing. This is arguing. This makes no sense. What a man who wants to have sex with a, ma a male and a female, but somehow that if he feels like a female, he can play on a woman's team. It is bizarre. It's not logical. It's not intelligence. These people, and Rand Paul does nothing about it except sit there talking about something that we're not talking about. He went and argued about people have sex changes. That's not what this is about. 
This is about people who are not having sex changes. They just feel this is not good. And I'm not against, I have field hockey players on my team that were gay. Nowadays, they wouldn't be able to even play on the team anymore because they're females. It's, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And so I hope you'll take a chance because I, I don't know what they're doing in Washington. When you're actually someone who has not a problem with individuals who are gay, I don't have a problem with it. That's not the argument. The argument is how could you ever think that a man should be able to play on a, a, a girl's uh, sports team? How can you do it? Thank you so much. Next up, we'll have uh, Paul Hamilton. Well, good evening. Uh, yes, I'm Paul Hamilton. I'm running to become your next U.S. Senator. Uh, my day job is uh, I'm an economics professor at Midway, so I, I took the two and a half hour drive here. Beautiful drive. The, the, the sun rays were bursting through the crowds. And if you're spiritual, then it's not about sun. It's about something special is going to happen, okay? Or someone's going to be chosen. So maybe some of us will be chosen May 17th. Uh, and as I mentioned, I'm actually uh, a lifelong academic. I, I've taught at a number of colleges, including Asbury and Wilmore, Kentucky, and currently at Midway, as I mentioned. So some people ask, well, why are you getting into politics now? Well, my campaign is about what I call next level Republican policies. Republicans have been dogged lately by what uh, that people know what we are against. We heard some of that in the last talk. Uh, but what are Republicans for? Uh, on my campaign site, paulvhamilton.com, I have detailed my specific vision for policies that accomplish the ideals of conservative economics and conservative values. Really, my campaign is about three core themes, truth, compassion, and action. I am, at least we used to be called, an evangelical Christian. I'm 100% pro-life. And it looks like uh, this year will be uh, a, a unique year, uh, the year that the Supreme Court will likely overturn Roe versus Wade. But I challenge my fellow Republicans, really all citizens, that our zeal for pro-life legislation be dwarfed by our compassion for women and children in crisis. Can we as private citizens guarantee 100% support for women and the unborn from prenatal to delivery to postnatal care? Can we as individuals guarantee that every child will have a home? It's a high calling, but one that must be met. Uh, on that theme of private action, rather than letting the government take care of things, I challenge specifically men in the church. Women are already largely doing this, but for the men out there, uh, we have many challenges that are facing society, and, and yet many of us sit idly by doing various things, watching basketball, watching other people do things. Uh, we have church buildings that spaces are largely in use six days a week. How can we get together other men and women uh, and find ways to use this, be, this spaces within our churches, within our homes, within our schools, uh, to meet the needs of the homeless, the sick, uh, the, the addicted? Uh, this is a huge challenge. It's not something that can be solved with uh, a one meeting or an hour a week devotion. It will take more time, energy, and money um, than that we could comfortably give. Uh, but it's a challenge that I throw out not only to you, but to myself. My second point is about turning conservative ideas into action. A day of reckoning is coming. Once in a century storms seem to happen every few years now. Our national debt, Social Security, and Medicare are on an unsustainable pass. What cannot go on forever will not go on forever. Uh, and that day, I'm afraid, is not far away. Uh, big, challenge require, or big challenges require big changes in how the government op operates. How do we cut hundreds of billions of dollars from the federal government? Uh, I have three specific policies that I'll just give you the headlines and you can go to my website to read the more uh, details. Uh, the first one, uh, we, we may have heard from Proverbs 22.7, the borrower is a slave of the lender. Why should the wealthiest country in the world be a net debtor? I propose that the federal debt should be held only by American citizens, 
not rogue nations. Number two policy, healthcare in America costs $10,000 per person. Um, that's uh, about double what many other nations are able to uh, provide their citizens with equal or even better health care. Number three, for taxes, I propose a somewhat wonky uh, value-added tax with compliance based on blockchain technology. Okay, um, Pretty technical, but something that I think is the future. My third point is about civility, decency, and honor. Some of the politicians, and, and maybe some of you here today, um, are still calling number 45 the president. May I suggest number 16 as a role model? A lanky Republican, like myself, uh, passed his, his birth home on the way uh, over today, um, who, uh, again, Abraham Lincoln, who symbolized leadership and was honorable, made the hard decision to make America great once and for all, and ultimately gave his life so that others may live. For those who are still thinking, let's go Brandon is funny, I offer the advice, do not mistake vulgarity for wit. I'm frequently asked why run against Rand Paul, who has millions of dollars and millions of, twi of, of Twitter followers. I simply ask, what has Rand done for you? Uh, firing Fauci will not bring jobs to Ohio County. Um, it may make us feel better, but it won't. Uh, I'm a true Republican in the spirit of Lincoln, Reagan, and Bush. I have real solutions described on my campaign site and look forward to speaking with many of you tonight and the weeks to come. Thanks. All right, next we'll have Mike Harmon. Oh, sorry, sorry. Thank you so much. How's everybody doing tonight? Are we still excited? Yeah. All right, well, it's certainly an honor and a pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, those who know me know I always like to start with something funny. Now, let me give you a fact, and I'll give you the funny. The, the fact is, I graduated EKU with a triple major in math, statistics, and theater. I tell everybody that way I know the math, I know the statistics, and when I don't know, I just act like I know. Well, since I'm a stat guy, you know, I love statistics. Well, just recently, of course, we had Valentine's Day last month, and my wife and I, we were sitting there watching the TV, and on the TV, a stat came up and said that 75% of married men don't know their wife's favorite flower. And I thought that was ridiculous. I leaned over to my wife and I said, it's all purpose, right? <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. Got a pet When you start talking to auditing, people start to get tired. So you gotta tell at least a joke to get started. Well, it's my honor to be your auditor. I'm actually also a candidate for governor in 2023. And, and uh, talking about flowers, speaking of dough, just getting there, but uh, it's the auditor's job to protect your all's dough and the taxpayer's uh, dough. And I'm, I can't, I don't have time to talk about everything, but just quickly, uh, in our statewide signal of Kentucky, last year we identified 400,000 emails were sent to the unemployment assistance line when everybody was trying to get unemployment and they just got archived without even being open. The other thing that our report found, there were 10 employees with the Office of Unemployment Insurance that applied for unemployment compensation even though they were still full-time employed and they actually accessed their own accounts even though they had been specifically trained not to access their own accounts. So that particular finding, we actually referred to the Office of Attorney General. And finally, the last thing I'm gonna tell you tonight about our the audit role is, and the sheriff mentioned it earlier, our office uh, actually pushed for it, because I had 13 years in Kentucky General Assembly, our office pushed for and got approved uh, through the General Assembly an AUP bill that allows the sheriffs and the county clerks if they have a clean audit the year before to apply for an agreed upon procedure, our sheriffs are seeing on average 70% savings, our county clerks are seeing about 65% savings. In just two years of implement implementation, we have helped county save well over $800,000. Thank you, thank you. All right, let me talk about my race for governor very quickly before time runs out. People ask me, why am I running for governor? You know, I'm a Christian, and I'm a father, and I'm a grandfather. And I want my kids and my grandkids, to be honest with you, someday my great-grandkids, to live in a state and live in a nation where they can believe they can accomplish anything 
And I mean anything. And sadly, our current governor has put a focus of fear over freedom. You know, he focused on fear over freedom when he shut down businesses. He focused on fear over freedom when he shut down the in-person unemployment offices when everybody was needing to get their unemployment. He focused on fear over freedom when he shut down our churches, sent our, our good, brave men and women of law enforcement, state police, to enforce it. You know they didn't want to do it. And I, as your governor, would never do that. I would never send them to violate your constitutional rights. And, and finally, you know, he focused on fear over freedom. We decided to build a wall around the governor's mansion. You know, it's crazy. So you all need a governor that's going to focus on freedom over fear. Now, just to quickly to give you a background myself, I actually graduated. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I ran for office twice and lost twice for the state house. When I won for the state house, I was the first Republican state representative from Boyle County in 102 years. Then I ran for auditor. Uh, later on, I ran for auditor. And when I ran for auditor, I only had $45,000. I was running against Adam Elin, who was the current auditor at that time, the incumbent. He had $800,000. Rachel Maddow had described him as the next up and coming Southern Democrat compared to Bill Clinton. Well, just quickly, uh, God laid on my heart about th three weeks before the election for auditor to pick up five stones, send them to the David and Goliath, the, the five stones. I took those, I put those in a baggie, and about two weeks before the election, I showed it to a good friend of mine, he was a Democrat, served with him in the House, and he said, I got this book I want you to read. I said, I don't have time to read a book. You know, everybody that runs, you get up before everybody, you go to bed before everybody, but he said, no, 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 he marked 13, or, I'm sorry, he marked 11 pages, and the book was David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell, and it said the underdog wins a third of the time. And the reason the underdog wins a third of the time is because one, he's got to trust in the Lord, and two, he's got to believe it all in the field. Well, the night of the election, I was down nine points in the polls, and the results were coming back and forth, back and forth. I said, guys, let's get ready to pray. And I don't know if any of y'all have seen Facing the Giants, the movie Facing the Giants, but I would pray kind of a Facing the Giants prayer. I said, Lord, I'm going to praise you whether I win, I'm going to praise you whether I lose, but all I can use a victory. And you know, it flipped, and those results never came back. And so I'm so pleased. And you'd be honest with you, whether I won or whether I lost, I still would have praised God. And the very first thing I did when I entered the auditor's office is I made sure I told all our auditors we don't hurt anyone, we don't give anybody a pass, we just simply follow the data. Uh, for more information, uh, you can find out about my campaign at mycarmen.com. If you interested in being involved you can go there and uh, sign up to either get emails uh, you can sign up if you would like to, to donate or or just if you want to volunteer thank you all so much god bless and you all have a great evening all right uh, we're going to go ahead and take a quick 10 minute break we're going to come back and give the silent auction prices away